Prova, 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 1, 2, 3, prova, prova.
saltato. Test, prova, test, sa, sa. Sparita la spugnetta qua. Test, prova, prova test, sa. Uh, no, just for the um, introduction.
Good morning, everybody. I think this works, so very good. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to the Elgant graduation ceremony. This is a yearly event, and already it took place in Padova in 2007, and this is the fourth time, and we are happy to be back in Padova at the same beautiful surroundings. My name is Peter Stevenhagen, which is a name that sounds Dutch. I'm from Holland. As you will see, many people involved are from various countries um, from all over the world. And we will actually deliver diplomas to the students uh, in this meeting, which is the main purpose. However, there's always a formal aspect to these big events. And before we actually start getting down to the actual work, I'd like to invite two speakers, one after another. And the first one will be uh, from the local university, the University of Padova, and that will be Professor Marco Ferrante, as you see, is the Proretore per la Didattica. So this is a high-ranking official, but deep inside, in his heart, he is still a mathematician, I was told. So I think he will deliver a nice speech for us. Professor Ferrante. Dear students and colleagues, I'm honored to address all of you as the Vice Rector for Teaching and Education at the University of Padova. On behalf of our Rector, Daniela Mapelli, I extend a warm welcome to this esteemed institution, one of Italy's most prestigious and historic universities. Founded in 1222, our university holds the distinction of being one of the oldest in the world known for each, its rich academic traditions and a commitment to excellence. In the 60th and 70th centuries, Padua was a workshop of ideas and the home to figures who changed the cultural and scientific history of humanity. They included Andrea Vesalio, who founded modern anatomy, as well as the astronomer Copernicus and Galileo Galilei, who served as a professor here for 18 years. Padua also wants the world's first university botanical garden and the first permanent anatomical theater, which was built by Girolamo Fabrici d'Acqua Pendente. William Harvey, who became famous for describing the circulation of a blood, studied in Padua. And in 1678, Elena Lucrezia Cornaro Piscopia became the first woman in the world to be awarded a university degree. Today, the University of Padua remains a vibrant and dynamic institution. As we recently conclude our 800th anniversary celebrations, we inaugurated the new Museum of Nature and, Human, and Humankind, located opposite the Scrovegni Chapel, this museum stands as the largest scientific university museum in Italy and is highly recommended for all of you to visit. With a student body of 7,200 under, thousand, sorry, undergraduates, 1,800 PhD students and more than 2,500 professors and researchers, the University of Padua has established itself as one of the largest research universities in Italy. We offer more than 200 undergraduates and master programs spanning various disciplines. In recent years, we have made significant strides in embracing our international character, with over a quarter of our programs now being taught entirely in English. Additionally, we have established over 30 giant and double degree programs with prestigious universities worldwide. Established in uh, 2004, the Algan Consortium was founded by University of Bordeaux, Leiden, and Padova, and started as an Erasmus Mundus program with a grant from the European Union. Algan has been the first Erasmus Mundus at the University of Padua. Along the years, Algan Consortium continued this work, adding new partners, Paris Sud in France, Duisburg, Essen, and Regensburg in Germany, Milan in Italy, and Concordia in Canada. The Erasmus Mundus program aimed to foster the establishment of new consortium 
that could eventually be continued independently without European Union support. Few programs have achieved this, but the Argan program stands as a testament of success. Today, the project proceeds autonomously and walks alone without the economic support of the European Union. Every year, there are around 200 applications from all over the world, and we gather here today to celebrate the graduation ceremony of the Alcan Consortium along with our partners. In conclusion, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to all the graduating students on this momentous occasion. I hope that you, your time at our university and in our town, which was recently included in the UNESCO World Heritage List for its 14th century fresco cycles, will be filled with wonderful experience and memories. Thank you very much, Professor Ferrante. Professor Ferrante represents the university, which is our host here in Padova. But the last two days, of course, he'd be in the math department. We also have our uh, mathematical host, the Department of Mathematics. And the Department of Mathematics is being represented today by Professor Bruno Chiarolotto. I'd like to invite him here to also deliver a speech. Good morning. Dear students, uh, parents, relatives, uh, friends, colleagues, welcome in this wonderful hall. My congratulations to the, all the students which are going to graduate today. As you know, uh, we are in uh, Padova, which is the St. Anthony town city. And the gift uh, that St. Anthony had uh, was the by location. It could be in two places at the same time. And uh, humbly enough, me too, I have uh, two reasons to congratulate and to welcome you here. First, as a director of the math department, as Professor Steven Hagen said. Secondly, as an active member of this uh, wonderful consortium. You are young, or perhaps you don't know, but uh, you should be aware that uh, this uh, network this consortium of a lot of European universities, not only European, is a result of a long-standing collaboration between uh, our university and uh, the research people who work in mathematics in these uh, universities. And uh, what you are going to see today, and what you, are, what you, are, you saw during your uh, period in the Algant, is uh, our achievement. Uh, at the beginning of the 90s, uh, universities like uh, Strasbourg, Milan, Leiden, Padova, Rennes, Regensburg, Münster, Bonn, Bordeaux, Paris, North, Sud, Six, uh, Cambridge, got involved uh, in what was called uh, training uh, mobility research in the 90s. It was a network sponsored by the European community, first as an exchange of uh, professor, then of research, then of postdoc, postdoc uh, students, and finally, an exchange of PhD students. This uh, network lasted, lasted for 15 years. All these universities share the same idea about research in algebra, geometry, and number theory, ALGANT, Al G number theory. Naturally, at the beginning of the century, it came the idea of, uh, to start a new project. Of, so we went down from uh, professor, research, postdoc, PhD, then a new project in master, and this is Allianz. What was the aim? The aim was to attract, in Europe, really good students. And the hidden aim was to steal the good students from the university in America. And uh, Algant was the answer. We managed to be sponsored by the European community in the framework, as it was said, uh, the, the so-called uh, Erasmus Plus program, the only one in mathematics among, the, among those which have been sponsored at that time. 
It was a net, very natural birth. It was not an artificial one. It was just the product of some of people, of research people, who share the same idea about mathematics. It was not just an idea, let's, let's meet together and uh, plan something. And uh, sorry about that, this is my feeling and uh, this is not written, okay? <laughs> so the consortium was really easy to build. And uh, so as I said, we share a common value. And the fact that uh, we are still here is a proof that we were right. We don't have any more the financial help of the European community. And we are here, and this was the aim of the project, to walk alone. And uh, our brand is known over, all over the world. If you say, your student, that you are going to graduate, you will put in your uh, curriculum, you will write, I, uh, I was graduated from Argant. And everybody will know that. So, dear student, you should be proud of your achievement. I thank all the colleagues, which are the, really the, in all the, all the <coughs> notes, notes of the consortium. They are really the, no, I would say skeleton. They are the nerve of the consortium. They teach to you, so you travel all over Europe, and uh, so you, you could appreciate this fact. And uh, so I would like also to thank the local organization, Professor uh, <coughs> Remeke Klosterman and uh, Nicola Mazzari, who organized these uh, two wonderful days, and all our staff in the math department, which uh, have uh, made big efforts. I would like also to thank the two uh, coordinators of this long history of Algant. Professor Boas Serez, which is there on the, on the chair there, which was the first coordinator of our <coughs> our consortium, and uh, uh, Professor Stevenagen, who took the helm of, and nowadays is the coordinator of our consortium. I think that uh, is, he did, they did a wonderful job. So, long life to Algant. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Carlotto. Thank you, Bruno. This is something that many of us feel as mathematicians. Yeah, you are young students. If you remain in mathematics and you get older, then you have to develop uh, sort of a second phase, a second face, I mean. And the way Professor Carlotto phrased it, he had to be in two places. Of course, he can only be in one place, but he has two different phases. He has the face of a mathematician, a teacher, and the face of an administrator. And combining these two things, it's not always easy, whether this is uh, Mr. Jekyll, Dr. Hyde, I mean, there are the phenomena in literature to combine these different things. At times, it can actually work out very well, and Algant, I think, is a good example. We had two talks already, uh, two speeches on Algant and on the history, and since I didn't know what our local host would be saying, I also had no clue what I would have to add to this story. We had a little history already. There is a canonical slide that we use to present Algant. Of course, we proudly say we are almost 20 years old in this surrounding where the university is 800 years old. That doesn't feel like a lot, maybe. But actually, a program like this, which is funded by Brussels, typically lasts only five years, and then the funding is finished and it's over. We got funded twice, so from the early days, as we you see from the various logos on top, you find the founding fathers, Leiden, Bordeaux, and Padova. And we gradually expanded, not for very strategic reasons maybe, just because we knew people we could get along with who moved, and actually the network sort of expanded by friendship rather than by strategic considerations. And it has remained uh, the basis of Algant. The reason things work, despite that we have so many different partners, and right now you see they're on various continents even, and the rules are always very different. So if you're a mathematician, it is very easy to prove that Algant cannot exist. The rules actually do conflict all the time. However, if you're willing to bend the rules when needed, and that's what you're doing all the time, it is possible to create a consortium like this, and even if circumstances change in the sense that Brussels stops funding you, you can still continue somehow. 
And that's a proof of existence, as we say, as mathematicians. And after almost 20 years, I'm very confident, if we, end, we are about to enter the third decade of Elgand, that we will happily continue in some way or another. To stress a little bit more uh, what is uh, the essence of Elgand, there are the numbers, of course, and these numbers are just supposed to be there to impress you. We get many applications. Typically, every spring we meet, we look at this, say, 150 to 200 applications. We decide that about 90 of them, maybe 100 at most, are admissible, and we mail an offer of some kind to the student. You all got these letters, and then some people get grants, some people get tuition waivers. We sort of make this up. And in the end, some people arrive, some people refuse the offer, they go somewhere else, and we have a generation which typically is 40, 45 students every year. And after two years, they actually end up getting their diploma, and that is what's happening today. So you see in the, the figures that there's two years, about 80 students typically are around. We also survived COVID without too many problems, which is also a miracle in itself for this kind of program. And by now, you are going to be part, later today, as uh, part of this elegant um, alumni community, there's 400 graduates all over the world already, and some of you graduates have become full professors already in universities. It turns out that most of you on a, uh, tend to go on and do a PhD. That is something that Brussels didn't like so much. If you do a master, then you're ready to improve the world or society or play a role uh, that uh, your government will be proud of you. If you continue doing pure math, which is a little bit an esoteric uh, kind of uh, activity, uh, yeah, you stay in the bubble that we all stayed in. And that's a choice you will have to make in the future. And it's not an easy choice, I can tell. We'll hear a little bit more about it also from uh, one of the other distinguished guests, uh, the representative of the alumni network. I mean, there's going to be more on that later. A few words on the people, just representing three pictures. It seems that nowadays, because of privacy issues, it's almost impossible to show a picture of anyone without requiring first a signature. So I can, as you understand, we have all the signatures of the students that graduated in Regensburg a few years ago. You will recognize the picture at the lower bottom that wasn't taken this morning. It was actually taken 10 years ago, and you see the usual suspects lined up and doing exactly 10 years ago what they did today. So despite all the changes in the world, some things really remain all the time. It's not just the mathematicians, as was stressed already by Professor Carlotto. There's lots of people behind us. There's administration, people up, uh, uh, higher up in the university. There is registration of you different and also difficult students. Yeah, most of us as students uh, are non-standard, you combine two universities, as I said, conflicting rules, there's lots of administration, and the willingness of people behind us to make this work actually made us survive these two decades. All right, that's enough general words about Elgant. It is time to actually start with the thing that everybody actually came for, the actual degree award. So the way this will happen is that we have 28 students that are physically here today, and that will get something. And the something also depends on uh, what happened to you. Ideally, and especially in the old days, we had lots of diplomas. However, producing diplomas nowadays is not an easy thing. It involves more people, it takes longer, and the rules get stricter every year. So the pile of diplomas is only very small, but and you, they also they come with various rules. There will be formulas in Italian or just handing over. Uh, that will depend on whoever is pronouncing what we call the laudatio. And laudatio, it's a Latin word. It means that we say positive things, mostly, on the students, how they did. Ideally, it should be a supervisor. But of course, we cannot have all these supervisors here physically uh, in Padova today. So they will often be represented by someone from the same university or someone who has a tie with you, and you will discover in a moment who that's going to be. It's one of the people here that you see seated. You cannot select yourself. We decide for you. That's the way things go. To compensate for the fact that you may not get a formal diploma yet, it may be mailed to you, it may take months, depending on the university, we have a very beautiful document that we may call a diploma. Some people call it a Mickey Mouse diploma, others call it an official certificate. 
And it is official in the sense that it does have physical signatures of the people that you see behind the table. And as you know, all these documents, they only have value if people believe they have value. And in many ways, having this Elgon diploma makes you part of a community that is well known in this world, mathematically speaking, of course. So having that diploma is almost as good as having a real diploma, which you also will get in due time, but I cannot tell you when exactly. Good. I will step down and uh, move to the actual ceremony, and uh, I will then sit there, and there will be various people performing their duties, as you will see. So the way this goes is that you see your name appear on a slide, and in this case, the victim is Davide Acadia. So he's supposed to come up. And then I have a different list of the person. Let me just get that here. In this case, it's Paolo Rossi. Just a moment. Okay. You take a microphone. I hope you should switch it on somehow. Doesn't work that way. Yes, you perform blood dance, exactly. Okay, so first of all, it's an honor to be here in this beautiful room to perform the laudatio of Davide, Arcadia. And what to say? So Davide came to me in a search for a thesis on a topic that uh, needed to be uh, challenging enough. Uh, the guy is actually uh, extremely, um, uh, so he knows what he wants mathematically. It's actually not that easy to have him as a, as a student because uh, he will put pressure on you. Uh, Davide uh, comes to your office and he wants to understand every single detail of what I uh, gave to him to read. And this is not uh, easy sometimes because papers are complicated and uh, uh, my, I myself, uh, when, uh, when uh, I think I understand a paper, then maybe some details I really don't understand, but he finds them out. So, yeah. So, what to say? Uh, it, it's uh, an honor to, to, to be here to say congratulations to Davide. And uh, some of the work is, uh, is still ongoing, and I'm really happy about it because it's a pleasure to work with him. And, uh, yeah, what to say? Congratulations, Davide. In case, you were, in case you were wondering what the blue thing was, uh, you'll all get this, and you may have guessed by the end of the ceremony uh, what it is, and actually use it for the group picture. We continue with Benedetta Andina, and Adrian Jovita will speak to her. Dear Benedetta, I'm very happy this moment arrived, and I am very happy to celebrate your success. I was one of your advisors in Montreal. We met in the fall of uh, 2026. You were coming from Leiden, where you had finished your first year of a master's degree. And uh, I have to confess, in the beginning, uh, your advisors, uh, Giovanni Rosso and I, were a little worried when you told us that you wanted to study topology, as we were not really prepared for that. But soon our worries were over, as you were very good in finding courses and uh, a thesis advisor in the person of Duncan McCoy at uh, UCAM. And for those of you who don't know what UCAM is, it is uh, Université de Québec à Montréal. It's one of the four universities in Montreal, one of the 
French language universities. And uh, Benedetta, I'm very pleased to have seen you've done a nice thesis on Cobordis. And uh, I observe that everything you had to do, you have fulfilled beautifully. And uh, in due time, you will receive a diploma from the University of, uh, from Concordia University and one from University of Padova, uh, giving, giving to you the degree of uh, Masters in uh, Mathematics. Congratulations, my warmest congratulations, and uh, well done. We continue with Francesco Angeli, and Jan Vonk will address him. Oh, you just said, <laughs> well, Martin Bright, correction, will address him. Francesco, so you've been uh, studying for your thesis in uh, Leiden, supervised by Leo Herr, but also jointly supervised by Jorge Vittoria. They can't be here today, but uh, Jorge has uh, sent a few words to be read out. So let me uh, read out what Jorge says. In order to work on his master thesis topic, Francesco had to dive into a series of different topics within the representation theory of algebras and homological algebra. During his stay in Leiden, we had weekly Zoom meetings in which I have seen Francesco grow in confidence and understanding on the subject. It's with great pleasure that I see Francesco reaching this end goal for which he worked so much. Although I cannot be present today, I leave this message to congratulate him on his work and to wish Francesco all the best in his endeavors. So let me add also my congratulations on behalf of Leiden. Uh, you'll be defending your thesis very soon, I understand, and I wish you all the best in completing it. Elena Bolliolo, and she will be spoken to by Klaus Kuhnemann from Regensburg. Still on? It's off. Klaus, it's off. Let's switch it on. Yeah, it's now better? So um, it's my pleasure to you to say um, a few words in the name of Clara Lö. She's from Regensburg and she supervised, you see this, um, even though you were your second year in Bordeaux. But I mean, it's not Clara and you see the title, that's clearly her. So here is what uh, she wrote uh, for you. So uh, Elena Bolioli shares my interest in strange constructions and tricks using mathematical logic. During her project, she had to juggle manifolds, group theory, number theory, and computability. She always had the courage to go where her mathematical curiosity led her and was lightening up classes and seminars by her questions and answers. So, uh, yeah, and she told me she had been very happy to work with you. So, all my best wishes for your future and um, congratulations. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Klaus can actually stay on stage since the next one is Giacomo Bertizzolo. Yeah, so um, you brought me your thesis with Danny Charles Cezinski and I also talked to him. So, um, so here is what he wrote me. Um, I have only very good things to say about you. Your master see this is remarkable. 
This is the best reference on the foundations of algebraic Dye theories that I know of. It is extremely well written, giving a very well articulated and complete introduction to the subject, easy to read without sacrificing rigor. <coughs> it has been a great pleasure to work with you, Giacomo, and I'm fully convinced that you have a bright future in the world of research of mathematics. So that uh, really means something. Yeah. So congratulations. <laughs> is Marion Enyaminezadeh, and I'm doing this myself rather than your supervisor, who's not in the room and being elegant, so this requires a certain explanation. Um, elegant is well known for its flexibility, and I think in the case of Marion, she also has a very special way of getting to the elegant. A little bit of history, um, that's the reason I'm here. I already met her before she was in elegant. We, we, I say many people among us, actually cooperate in so-called SIMPA schools. These are uh, schools for master students around the world in developing countries, as it was called. I think there's a different word for it now, but I'm a little bit old-fashioned. And uh, there was a SIMPA course that took place in Indonesia in February 2020. And you may remember that something happened in February 2020. There was this COVID thing that actually originated in Asia. We in Europe had no problems, but there it was a little bit fishy to go actually go to. And also it was already developing in Iran in those days, I think. So, yeah, so in those days it was not clear whether we could actually get back from uh, Indonesia to Europe and uh, also to Iran. It was very complicated in those days. And now we are three years uh, further, more than that, and you have or are about to get a diploma and your supervisor, who is not an elegant, is René Schoof. As you see, he is actually from Rome. There's a very strong Italian connection in uh, elegant, even though it is sometimes represented by the Dutch. And René Schoof uh, actually was your supervisor during your second and third year in um, Bordeaux. Uh, uh, of course, I couldn't reach him, so I don't have much to say about your actual thesis. You can also maybe reflect on yourself a little bit later. We come to that. And at this point, I think I can just say that I'm very happy that you made it this far you are to continue for a PhD, like many of us in uh, Elgam do. And I think there's a bright future ahead of you. Paolo Bornillon is the next one. And, whoop, he is from Paris, so I got our Paris representative, Kevin Destagnol. Yeah. Thank you. So I have a little confession to make. I didn't interact a lot with Paolo, even as a local coordinator in Paris, and there is a simple reason for that. Every time I was meeting you or sending you an email, he was telling me everything's perfect, just got the top grade in algebraic geometry, just got the top grade in number theory. And for those of us who did survive the algebraic geometry in Paris, including me, they know how impressive uh, it is. Then he did find his uh, master thesis advisor on his own, Pierre Charlois, and his future PhD advisor, Jan Vang. And Pierre confirmed to me how impressed he was with your work and how fast you acquired new knowledge and how independent you were. So there is not much to say than congratulations, and we're convinced that you'll become a very successful PhD student and mathematician. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, next student is from Spain, to be slightly more specific, from Basque country. And she will be spoken to by Andrea Lucchini from Parma. So, dear Carmele, 
I think that you did uh, a very good work in your investigations of graphs associated with group. Uh, you had uh, a dangerous task uh, because I proposed you to prove a theorem, uh, but I was not sure that the statement was correct. <laughs> so you were, <laughs> you were lucky because the result was really true and uh, your clever, well, your proof was clever and well organized. So I think that your thesis contains uh, interesting uh, and new results. Uh, and it will be nice to continue your work uh, with further implementation uh, of, the, of the idea contained uh, in your thesis. Uh, you have worked uh, very hard and carefully, but I hope uh, that for you it was not only an intense and tiring experience, uh, but also a fun and stimulating one. For me, in any case, it was a pleasure to have you as a student in my course and to, su and to supervise your activity. I hope you enjoyed your stay in Leiden and Padova, and I hope that the return to your country will be pleasant and relaxing now. I congratulate you for the goal that we have reached, and I wish that in your future, Whatever activity you will undertake, your qualities will be appreciated and your potential enhanced. because I have also to declare you doctor in mathematics, and uh, you have also a mark for your graduation, and your mark is uh, 120 and laude. So congratulations. Okay, as you see, it does happen that we actually deliver physical diplomas, and Padova is doing well these days. Uh, there will be more coming up. We continue with Nicolo Bosio, and in his case, Paolo Rossi will speak to him. Okay, so Nicolo, you know that uh, I'm only formally your advisor, your true advisor is a uh, uh, Sergei Monavari, and he actually sent me something to read to you, so I will just read what he sent to me, and maybe I will cut it a little bit because it's uh, on the long side, but uh, yeah. So, Nicolò spent his first year at the Algan Problem, uh, uh, program at Concordia, and the second here in Padova. In his thesis, he studies Hyman's proof of the celebrated and N factorial conjecture. Um, the work of Hyman is a combination of unexpected connections among, among different fields, but presents many technical aspects as well that make uh, use of a wide range of adv advanced mathematical tools. Despite this, Nicolò was able to navigate through this work um, uh, brilliantly. And uh, Nicolò showed a genuine and broad interest in mathematics already the first time he contacted me, where me is uh, Sergei, of course, uh, he followed online seminars, uh, I gave at Algant online seminar last year, and uh, after uh, the many questions he asked, it followed a deep e email e exchange, at the end of which he asked me to supervise his thesis. It was a, a brave choice because choosing an external advisor is sometimes not easy to contact him, to keep in contact. And um, so he says that uh, he, uh, I immediately knew Nicolò uh, could do this since uh, he wrote a bachelor thesis and analysis during his master's. Uh, he took courses in various different directions, so he had a wide background. And um, uh, Sergei says that he enjoyed the whole process. Uh, uh, actually, he's directly uh, addressing you. So he says, I enjoy the whole process of your supervision and I can tell you now that I learned a lot as well and not just math-wise with you. So I uh, really hope you can treasure this experience to find your way in the future. I wish you many congratulations, Sergei.
as you realize, if you do something 30 times in a row and the procedure is almost identical, there's a risk that people get bored after a while. So we have devised something in Elegant to make things a little bit more lively. So we separate, the, say, the 30 students by two students in the middle that have a different role. They are asked to reflect a bit on the, uh, yeah, what happened in Elgant and to offer a perspective. And that's a completely free talk. They can say whatever they want. And we typically try and find students that maybe in their later life would have a talent to become a stand-up comedian or do anything that makes it uh, good to stand behind a cathedral like this and talk to people. And the first uh, candidate we propose, you've seen her already, I didn't say too much about her because she's actually going to speak herself how it is to be, say, Iranian in Algand and struggle with the world as a whole. Marianne, please. I am lonely, just like a school kid who madly enjoys her geometry lesson. This is a line from a poem by Farouk Farouzad, who had nothing to do with mathematics, actually. At, at least not that we know of. And uh, I sometimes wonder what, like, what makes you come up with that line. And I think most people in this room have experienced that at some point, being lonely and enjoying what you actually enjoy. And I think it's, it's at the same time scary and also it's a pleasure to be in this, as it was already called, bubble of mathematics, where you almost forget how rare and special it is to enjoy this level of abstraction, actually. And I, yeah, I, I probably should begin by thanking Elgans and all the people involved. Um, yeah, it's, as you can guess, it's not a rhythm speech, so I'm generating stuff a bit here. Um, they, they sometimes tell you that it's not about the journey, and it's, it, it's, it's about the journey and not the destination, like that you, should, should not be focused on the goal. But I, I, I don't always agree with that in a sense that the destination and the ending is not only the ending, but the beginning of what's ahead of you. And I think it can be very different depending on where you begin your next journey. We, I assume, have came from very different points. And I'm glad that we are all in this room together today, ending at the similar situation almost. So yeah, uh, it, it won't be long. I just, and it's not about Iran if you are waiting for it, sorry Peter. Um, I just wanted to wish you all the best for whatever journey is ahead of you. I hope this ending is the proper beginning for that. And yeah, I think that's it. Sorry, it's a bit short. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mariam. Things do not have to be long to be good. Thank you very much. And I know standing here is sort of a scary position, but there are many things you can finally get used to. All right, we continue. Hua Jing and Klaus Kuhnmann will speak to him. started in Corona times, which was uh, probably not very easy, and so it took you um, a little bit uh, longer, and I, um, I talked uh, to, to your supervisor, which in fact was not uh, Cizinski, but Mark Holbar, and he, he even had lost contact with you. So I'm even more happy that you came here to present your um, 
the, the work you have already done on your series and, and uh, the content um, to, to us on Monday. I think it, this was a good step uh, to come here. Um, but uh, of course, you know there is still work to be do and um, I hope um, that uh, this um, will be finished soon. And um, so um, you will also get um, the Algant um, certificate, which says that you have done um, the two-year program. And uh, now you have to work on um, the series. I think there's still really uh, some work to be done. But I think the, it was a good first step to come here. Yeah, so my best wishes for this. And uh, well, then you get this here. And ah, no, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Because, because you're not somehow not, you, you started one year before, there was some administrative problem, so the certificate will be sent by post, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, nevertheless, my best wishes and, um, and keep in mind what I told you. <laughs> Thank you, Klaus. Please remain on stage. Eider Gonzalo is your next student. Yeah, Ida, you gave a nice uh, presentation on Monday where you explained us that you start to work on your series. So I do not really get have um, remarks from Jonathan about your work because it's still at an early, at an early stage. But I think you presented very nice uh, what it's about and you showed us that you have already started. And uh, so now I wish you all the success in finishing and uh, it was a pleasure to have you in Regensburg. So, my congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, so this is yours. So, best of us. Just leave it on. It's fine. Yeah. The next student is David Klompenhauer. I'm not sure this is the way you pronounce it in Italy, but that's the way we do it in Holland. Paolo Rossi will speak to him. Yes. Hi again. And um, yeah, so David actually is a real student uh, of mine. And um, actually, I uh, met him um, when he came to my office to ask for a thesis, of course. And he was actually, uh, since he is a brilliant student, uh, he was uh, really doing well with the exams wise. So he had a lot of time during his last year. And uh, while uh, that happened, uh, I had a colleague, a collaborator of mine here in Padova. And uh, so Renzo Cavalieri is a professor in Colorado. And uh, he was giving a PhD course at our PhD school. And so I suggested, why don't, why don't you just follow that course? It will maybe initiate you a little bit on what we want to do on, on the thesis. But you know, it's an advanced course. It's a PhD course. I don't know if... And of course, uh, David had no problem. That David had, had uh, no problem uh, at all following that course. So this uh, was already a suggestion that he was an ex exceptionally talented student. And uh, this was confirmed during the thesis. The thesis is actually almost ready. I think I just have to read the final manuscript. And uh, he studied this very modern theorem. Uh, this, uh, it's called Witten's Conjecture, actually. And, um, and uh, he showed uh, uh, great independence. Actually, uh, I, uh, I maybe helped in a couple of places with some suggestions, but he did all by himself. So very, very good. And um, yeah, uh, I have nothing left but uh, extending my congratulations. So, David, congratulations. The next student is Chen Ying Lin. She finished in Bordeaux, so Denis Benoit will speak to her from Bordeaux. Yeah. And it has a button somewhere. That's, uh, mm -hmm. hey, uh, Keep close to your mouth. So, uh, dear Chen Ying, uh, uh, you came to Bordeaux from uh, Regensburg uh, and uh, you prepared your uh, master project uh, on uh, extremal theory of extremal sets, uh, which uh, goes back to some question of Paul Erdos. You improved some uh, existing results in this domain, replacing some uh, 
exponential growth conditions by polynomials one, and this uh, was, a, was a very successful uh, master project. And uh, you stay in Bordeaux, and uh, I wish you all the best for in your further studies and uh, research. Uh, all, uh, our congratulations. The next student, Luca Lagarde, is from Bordeaux and also French, so no surprise, Denis Benoit will speak to him. Okay, so, uh, uh, dear Luca, so you, after spending one year in Leiden, you came back uh, to Bordeaux and uh, you prepared your project uh, on uh, unified cohomology. Uh, during your internship, you understood the importance of unramified cohomology uh, for uh, uh, Noether's uh, problem for complexes. And uh, you prepared it between uh, Paris and, uh, I mean, traveling between uh, Paris and Bordeaux. Bravo for your project and uh, congratulations uh, and uh, all the best uh, for continuation uh, Wishing uh, you improve nice theorems uh, in the future. We continue with Joella Lorenzon, who was in Padova and Leiden, and Jan Vonk from Leiden will speak to her. Kijk naar het knopje. All right, uh, Joella, um, I was not your supervisor, as you know. Um, so, if I'm being honest, really my only qualification for doing this laudatio is that I'm physically here and I'm wearing the right outfit. Um, but it is my pleasure uh, to be able to convey some words uh, from your supervisor to you, Sarah Arpin. And uh, I have to dig deep into my pockets <laughs> to fish out this. Uh, so maybe a stark reminder that we're in the 21st century, in spite of what you might think uh, when you look around. I'm going to be reading it from my phone. So these are some words from, um, from Sarah Arpin. She says, Dear Joella, I'm very sorry I cannot be there in person for this final step of your master's. You have worked very hard to get to this point, and I hope you enjoy this day to reflect on all that you have accomplished. When you first came to me in the fall of 2022, we chatted generally about my research, and you enthusiastically chose a research question from a few that I had suggested. Your work began with the task of learning the extensive background required to work with supersingular elliptic curve isogeny graphs. I provided some suggestions for material to start out with, but soon you were going further and finding your own resources to ensure you had the understanding necessary to answer our questions and beyond. With this understanding, you began exploring research level questions. And whenever we would end a meeting with a question, you would always arrive to the start of the next with examples, ideas, and graph theoret oh, sorry, and often answers. Your thesis on the graph theoretical properties of super singular elliptic curve isogeny graphs is a beautiful record of what you have learned and the many examples you have computed to sort out complicated questions in this field. Over this past semester, I have been very impressed by your mathematical curiosity and independence. These qualities will serve you well as you further your research experience in a future PhD program. Congratulations, gefeliciteerd and congratulazioni.
excellent, a diploma, a t-shirt, and a certificate. We continue with Kinlock Lee, and let me see, he, uh, yeah, Johannes Sprang will speak to him. And Johannes, please take the microphone and switch it on. Yeah, so Lee Kinlock, I know you from my lecture on complex geometry and also from the seminar on the beginning varieties, but I have, not, I have not supervised your thesis, so I would like to read some words of your supervisor, Ulrich Goertz. So he writes, Lee Kinlock had to cope with visa-related difficulties in the beginning of his year at Essen, and did so really well. I'm impressed how much material and algebraic geometry he has learned during the last months. In our lecture classes, but also by diligent self-study in the course of working in his master thesis. There's no doubt that with his persistence and commitment to understanding technical details as well as the big picture, he, has, he will su successfully finish the Algon program and could continue um, his way in mathematics. I wish him all success. Next to it is Elena Ramona Meyer from Switzerland, and Andrea Lupini will speak to her. So, dear Elena, in your thesis, uh, you did a very useful job uh, for me and for my future students, uh, and probably also for my future co authors. Uh, indeed, uh, you have uh, systematically analyzed uh, and exposed uh, some results uh, that I often use in my research activity but which are scattered in several articles, uh, some of them are really difficult to find. When my students uh, have to use uh, this result, uh, they never really know where to find them well explained. Uh, and also my authors have the same problem. From now on, uh, I can direct them to your thesis. Thank you also for helping me to read some old articles uh, written in German uh, that was rather difficult for me. <laughs> it was a pleasure to have you as a student uh, in my courses uh, and uh, to have supervised both your bachelor and the master thesis. So congratulations and best wishes to assert all your qualities in the future. And mix up in the t-shirts, oh, that's something serious, right? You gave the wrong t-shirt, where is it? Did you get the right t-shirt? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> ah. Excellent, we continue with Francesco Romano and Professor Klaus Kuhnmann. Yeah, so Francesco, it was very nice to have you in Regensburg. You have written your master's thesis with uh, Christopher Winges. And uh, so here's what he wrote to me. So um, I guess I initially got to know Francesco through a seminar on simple homotopy theory, where he valiantly and successfully tackled the task of setting up the entire framework for the proof of the s cobaltism theorem, which would occupy the following four talks. His thesis topic arose as a canonical extension of the contents of this seminar. He continued to work carefully and diligently on the topic I proposed to him, showing eager interest in learning new material without any fear of the unavoidable difficulties and technicalities. Every once in a while, he surprised me when I proposed reading and understanding a chapter of a research article to him thinking that this would keep him busy for a couple of weeks, only to hear back from him within of a few days that he was finished with the chapter and I would like to discuss how to continue from there. I wish you all the best for your future. Yeah, and of course I do that as well, so my congratulations. <laughs> and, uh, great. Uh, 
take some more time. I guess by now you know what is supposed to happen if I actually leave my chair and stand up here. It means that something really important is about to happen. Actually, this whole t-shirt business is another way to actually give you a feeling of how we are proceeding with the students. Also, we had an R, so those students having a name with a P may think they forgot about me. That's not the case. You may have noticed that the order of the students is not exactly the alphabet, but something close to it. So you still have at least 10 more students to figure out what the reason is why the students are exactly in this order. Okay, the next speaker will be a student again. And clearly, uh, if you have only two students and so many Italians, it's clear that you need an Italian student. So I'm happy to invite Lucia Tesorolo to come over. Please. Distinguished professors, esteemed faculty members, dear family, friends, and Algan students, it is a real honor to be here today, hosted by the University of Padova, which is where I studied the first four years of university, and which is also where I am from. And especially, it is a great honor to have the chance to receive the Algan Diploma in such a wonderful framework full of history, which is the Aldamagna of Palazzo Bo. So I uh, am sure that many of you who did their bachelor during COVID or in Padova would agree that our kitchen, our living rooms, and the Pietrocento were way better than this place. But it's fine, we just have to settle for this. Okay, and I am also quite happy to note that there is a strong representation of women in this uh, program of theoretical mathematics, which is unfortunately in contrast in contrast to many other scientific realities. And I really hope that this is just a positive sign for future generation of mathematicians. Uh, during my undergraduate studies in Padua, I discovered my passion for geometry, and I was thrilled to learn that you, this university was a partner in the Algant International Program that I decided to join. As everyone will probably agree, this experience, has been, this experience has been transformative both academically and personally. Academically, we have been exposed to a different university environment. And I have to say that, at least for me, uh, it was not easy at first to adapt to a new academical context. But with perseverance and with the help of those who shared this experience with me, I managed to find my place and enjoy the ride. And I am sure now that this experience gave the right tools uh, to me to start my PhD in France next year and to all of my fellow students to pursue their career next year. Um, thanks to this double degree program, I also had the chance to see diverse approaches to the study of mathematics and to find which topic of mathematics I really enjoy. And I want to address what Marion said before, I now know that uh, having the chance to be a mathematician is a real honor because, I mean, having the chance to uh, see all the abstraction is very cool. Um, <laughs> um, personally, I had the opportunity to meet people from different cultures, and I feel very fortunate to have shared the exper this experience with special individuals whom I otherwise would have never had the chance to meet. And a thrilling part of this was also learning tradition and habits of all such people, even food-wise. But I'm sorry, I have to say that in my personal opinion, Italian food is still the best. <laughs> um, additionally, I had the chance to live independently, learning to manage my own responsibilities. And this, is what, this was not an easy task as well, especially if you have to deal with bureaucracy of different countries. And for this, I really, really want to thank the, the administrative officers who have always been ready to help us answering our numerous emails. So really thank you. 
Um, now I also would like to thank some other person who shaped my Algant experience. So first, a special thank um, you goes to all the professors who have, have and still are encouraging us to pursue our passion and inspiration, giving us the chance to explore the world of mathematics, so thank you. Um, then I would like to express uh, uh, my heartfelt gratitude to those who have organized uh, these three days, providing us with the opportunity to meet people with similar yet so different experience. It has been a unique occasion for us to connect and to learn from each other, and I hope that this day will be just the start of many others, so good luck to everyone, and thank you for... Thank you very much, Lucia. So if there's a takeaway message, Italian food is still the best. <laughs> but only if you've spent some time abroad, you're entitled to say so. We continue with the next student. Uh, Pierre Federico Paccarotti and Klaus Kuhnmann will speak to him. You have been in Regensburg. It was very nice uh, to, to have you there. I would say something about this afterwards. So I uh, asked uh, Mark Colva, who was your senior advisor, to say something. I think he did it for the first time, so it has become quite technically, but uh, there are many mathematicians which hopefully appreciate and the others maybe. Um, so um, your master see this is a very impressive and almost self-contained 200-page exposition leading to the definition of quasi-smooth blow-ups, including all the prerequisites from infinity category theory and derived algebraic geometry, such as thorough discussions of sheaf, infinity, topoi, animation, symmetric monodial structures, modules over animated rings, and their properties. Your writing style is very meticulous and entirely original. The organization of the material, the statement of results and proofs do not follow any sources. For example, you set up the foundations for derived algebraic geometry using both the functor of points and ring uh, topoi perspectives in a completely model independent way based on animated commutative rings. There exists no such treatment in the literature. This shows that you have acquired a fairly deep understanding of these topics. In particular, you have become an expert user of infinity category in a very short time. So I think that's a very impressive uh, comment. And I might add personally that I was also very impressed by your ability to, to learn German. I, mean, he, I taught linear algebra last year, and he gave one of the classes and he taught in German to first years. Yeah, I mean, you cannot uh, just simply switch to English. And he did a very well job. And also, if you talk to him, I mean, his German is really impressive. So uh, it was a great pleasure to have you in Regensburg. And my congratulations. So, this and <coughs> so my best wishes. It was really very schön. We continue with the next student. She's called Ria, but with her family name it becomes a little bit longer. Parang Kamyam Vira Mamachan. It's a bit of a tongue twister, but we usually manage. And Remke Kloosterman from Parva will speak to you. So, dear Ria, so you came after doing your undergrads in India, to first to Essen and then to Parva. You came with an impressive record from Essen concerning the number of exams and the grades. But also, when you came to Parva, you told me that you probably preferred not to be in the most abstract branches of algebraic geometry and wanted to have some different type of, of topic for your thesis. Now it happened last year that there was a big breakthrough in say, the mathematics of cryptography, so you wrote a thesis about um, the mathematical aspects of that uh, crypto attack. Um, it was a very nice thesis and I'm also 
Stefan Muller from Groningen was very happy about this, so he offered you a position to continue in my alma mater of Groningen. So I probably will meet there again. And I'm very impressed with you, and I wish you, wish you all the best for your future. And now I have to do something, so have to do something formal, and it's the forest from Padova the last time that we can do this in Italian. So, um, Signore Dia Mamacian, la Commissione ha considerato il curriculum delle studie della computer e ha fruttato la tesi di laurea attribuisce alla prova finale la produzione di, 100, 100, di 110 su 110 e load per l'autorità confermata del magnifico rettore del programma dottore magistrale in matematica. Thank you very much, Remka. So this was the version with the formula. I hope you appreciated that. We continue with Emanuele Ronda. Adrian Jovita will speak. Look at the picture. He's been in Montreal. <laughs> yeah, Emanuele. I'm very glad uh, I have the chance of saying these words here in Aula Magna of the University of Padova because our acquaintance started here uh, three years ago when we did together a course on Riemann surfaces, uh, you as a student and me as an instructor. And uh, at the end of that uh, course, we started working on your um, undergraduate thesis and then you studied uh, the Algand Masters program, first year in Padova, and uh, in the fall of 2022, you came to Montreal. And uh, you, I have to say that I'm very pleased to see that uh, you managed to continue your um, undergraduate thesis, which was on the Riemann Rock theorem, and you continue to. Uh, study the Kodaira Spencer dimension and uh, the Taka conjecture. And uh, I am very pleased to remark that you have fulfilled all that you had to do to receive uh, a well deserved master degree in mathematics from the University of, uh, from the Concordia University and the University of Padua. So congratulations and success in uh, your PhD degree that you will start next year at UCAM with uh, Stephen Liu. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, they must be here, I think. Echo. I hope you took the right T-shirt, right? Excellent, thank you, sir. He looked at it, then do we take care of it. Very good, then we continue with Angela Pellone and Klaus Kuhnemann will speak to her. Yeah, taking the t-shirt first. You see, we sort of get the hang of this. The microphone. Okay, yeah, dear, dear Angela, it was a pleasure to have you in Regensburg, and you wrote your thesis with Clara Lue, so I talked to her, and uh, so here is um, what she wrote. So, um, Angela very carefully worked her way through exotic groups and group swings. In her detailed study, she found the right questions to ask, and I'm impressed by her ability to combine the thesis and other obligations. Moreover, I appreciated the discussions on mass at schools, whatever you have discussed. Anyway, it was very nice to have you in Regensburg, and um, you, um, well, for some reason, we do not have the diploma, right, for some technical reason. So I apologize for this, but uh, you will get it by, um, by, by, by mail, and um, yeah, well, also the, the official. 
official degree is not ready yet because our administration always takes more time. But uh, nevertheless, I wish you all the very best. So this is for you and congratulations. It worked, yeah. Thank you, Klaus. Uh, sorry for having you do the long delivery of the diplomas all the time. It just happens to be you. Sorry. Johannes already knows the, who he's supposed to speak to, so Paolo Sommaruga. Go ahead. Yeah. So, how do I not supervise your masterpieces? So, I will just read some words of Massimo Bertolini, your supervisor. So, he writes Paolo Sommaruga is one of the several Italian students who came to Essen thanks to the Algam Master. During the first semester, he attended my master seminar on number theory where he did very well and expressed his interest in dwelling deeper into number theoretical themes. Considering his background, I proposed that he work in a master thesis on p-adic L functions, fo focusing on the analogies and differences in the construction of the Kobota Leopold and Laser Sonaten Dyer p-adic L function. He performed this task to my satisfaction, turning out to be a motivated and capable student, able to work with considerable independence. I am glad he is staying in Essen in our PhD program working under my direction. Yeah, and I also would like to add some words. So I also somehow, you also attended some lecture um, of mine. You were always a very good student. You had excellent grades and gave very nice uh, seminar talks. So I think you managed all your way to your master without any difficulties. But I think now comes the mo maybe most challenging step towards your master degree. It's challenging for me and not for you because I have to read the Italian formula from Milano. So <laughs> Okay. Dottore Paolo Samaruga, la Commissione, considerato il curriculum della studio per lei, compiute e volata la tesi di laurea, attribuisce la prova finale alla votazione P110-110 e lode. Per l'autorità conferitami dal magnifico rettore la proclamo dottore magistrale in matematica. Thank you, Johannes, for the beautiful formula. As you notice, the Italians will push the foreigners to actually speak the formulas in this audience. Good. We continue with someone we know already, Lucia Tessarola. Tessarola. And Davide Tessarolo. Hello? Oh, yes. the typo, yeah. Sorry, there has to be a typo on the sl slides. That's inevitable. Sorry about this. OK. so. Um, I first met uh, Lucia in 2021 when she was looking for a uh, uh, bachelor thesis, a topic for a bachelor thesis, and uh, uh, it was my first year in Padova, so I started to suggest some very classical topic, the Gauss-Bonnet theorem. So in the end, she did not pick this topic, and so uh, I was uh, very happy to, to see her again after two years in asking me uh, again a, a topic for uh, the master thesis. So I said, I should not miss it. Uh, since I know that mathematicians like generalization, I suggested a generalization of the Gauss-Bonnet theorem, and this time it worked. So, <laughs> so this was um, a very nice work, so Lucia did a great job, I was uh, very happy and uh, it was a pleasure to work with her. Uh, she's very serious, she can give uh, very nice speeches, and uh, I'm very happy she can continue with uh, a PhD after this uh, diploma. So congratulations. next student is already the third from the Basque country. You see they really are a positive proportion of our student population. And he will be spoken to by Nicola Mazzari. And he is actually going to get an actual diploma with an Italian formula. So prepare for that one. Here you go. So I'm speaking on behalf of um, Professor Eloisa De Tomi. She was uh, his advisor, her advisor, and uh, she cannot be here. So from now on, I will read uh, her statement. I'm glad 
that the ongoing collaboration with the, the University of Bilbao brings us very good Algan students. Unai is definitely one of them. He chose to spend the first year in Leiden and then the second in Padua, where he studied group theory. He has proved to be an enthusiastic mathematician and I'm confident that his determination and positive personality will help him to, the, to be as successful in life, whatever choice he made in the future. I do hope also that he will keep good memories of the time in Padova, not only of the last days in the Dolomites, where I believe you had good time. So now I come back to my personality, no more Eloisa, and I will speak Italian. Signor Unai Troia Ramaco, la Commissione, considerato il curriculum degli studi da lei compiuto e valutata la tesi di laurea, attribuisce alla prova finale la votazione di 110 su 110 con lode. Per l'autorità conferitami dal magnifico rettore, la proclamo dottore il magistrale in matematica. Congratulazioni. We continue with Sara Valian from Croatia. She's been in Padova and Leiden, and she will be spoken to by Jan Vonk. All right, Sara, it's a great pleasure to be able to do this laudation for you. Uh, we greatly enjoyed having you in Leiden. I myself was fortunate enough to have you in a few uh, classes, but most importantly, I was on your thesis exam committee uh, which we had in Leiden a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I carefully read your thesis and I have to say I tremendously enjoyed it. I thought it was very, very interesting and I'm therefore also very excited and happy to hear that you're going to continue your mathematical journey with a PhD in London. So I very much hope that with these upcoming mathematical adventures you'll be able to find the joy in all of them uh, and also be able to see in yourself all the qualities which all of us can very clearly see in you. Uh, since I was not your supervisor uh, through the wonders of technology, um, I will also pass on some words from your supervisor, Eugenia Rosu. There we go. Academic life is uh, full of challenges, such as getting your phone out when you're wearing a gown. Uh, um, all right, so these are Eugenia's words. Dear Sarah, Towards the end of 2022, you came and talked to me about a thesis project, and I thought learning about Sylvester's conjecture would be a lovely introduction to many tools in modern number theory, while being in itself an elementary problem. It was excited to start talking to you about the project. And initially, I had a more computational project in mind. It was very nice to see that you got fascinated by the theory in the papers of Das Gupta and Voigt, and became interested in understanding all the details of their proofs. So you started working on the project right away, reading independently a great amount of background on elliptic curves, and later on, more background on modular forms, complex multiplication, class field theory, you name it, even very specialized topics such as Shimura's reciprocity law. This was a very difficult project, and you have made great progress from literally not having seen an elliptic curve in your life before, all the way up to independently constructing non-torsion points on a family of elliptic curves using the method of Das Gupta and Voigt, and even catching some small errors in the paper. This was a massive undertaking, and you succeeded greatly in your goal. During the process, you have made a lot of progress on your own, independently finding resources and trying to give full proofs for most of the statements in the paper of Das Gupta and Voigt, as well as asking very pertinent questions when things were unclear. In the final version of the thesis, you showed great insight when providing motivations for the proofs and provided a very nice presentation of the topic. I'm very happy that you're starting a PhD at the London School of Number Theory, and I encourage you to continue pursuing mathematics with the same joy that I saw during working on your thesis. I wish you 
good luck, and I am very much looking forward to seeing you uh, and your future work. Congratulations. Thank you, Jan. We continue with Jubin Wang from Taiwan. Sorry, China, excuse me. Ah, all these details. It's a touchy one, right? <laughs> However, to compensate for this error, we're going to have a Milano formula to be pronounced by Denis Benoit from Bordeaux. Please. Dear Jubin, uh, uh, you came um, to Bordeaux from um, Milano in uh, October of last year, but uh, you passed your uh, exams very successfully. And uh, you yeah. went to ask me about a possible research uh, projects for your master thesis. And uh, between um, I, ha I had some, um, several projects in mind, but you choose the most difficult one. But I am very happy that you learned this beautiful theory and uh, choose the Pierre Ducot theory as a domain for your uh, further uh, research. Uh, you stay in Bordeaux. And uh, uh, we wish you all the best for your studying or, or in your uh, mathematical uh, journey in Pierre de theory. Uh, congratulations. Uh, I also should read uh, the formula on behalf of uh, the University of Milano. Dottore Jubin Wang. La Commissione, considerato il curriculum degli studi, da lei compiuta e valutata la tesi di laurea, attribuisce alla prova finale la votazione di 109 su 110. Per l'autorità conferita anni dal magnifico rettore, la proclama dottore magistrale in matematica. Okay, I personally checked the t-shirt just to make sure there was no further confusion between China and Taiwan. And we continue with the student from Taiwan after China, and she's He Xing Yang, and Kevin Destagnol from Paris will speak to her. All right, so Timi, you arrived at uh, Orsay after one year in Essen, and I was surprised to see that you had everything figured out already had a very precise plan. You wanted to work on et al. cohomology, Brow groups, rational points, and with David Harari. I even think you wrote to him before arriving in Orsay. And so you worked very hard to actually acquire the tools that, was, that were needed. And you did survive the algebraic geometry course as well. And in the end, you did uh, succeed in uh, doing your master thesis with David Harari. And he told me that he was very happy with your, with your work. And we are actually both very happy that you did get a PhD offer to work on rational points in the Netherlands, and we're looking forward to seeing you in the future in conferences and to hear all about your future works. Congratulations. Okay, I made sure to take away the final t-shirt to show that indeed we finished all the candidates that are physically here today. And on behalf of the Elgant Consortium, 
I'm very happy to congratulate you all with the degree that you receive or will receive. <laughs> So now you do realize that after receiving your diploma or almost getting it, depending on what your situation were, you're going to be a graduate of Elgant. That's a very honorary distinction, as you can imagine. And I'm not the one to tell you, I'm not an uh, Elgant graduate myself. However, we do have someone uh, among our distinguished guests, Francesco Campagna. He is in many ways a generic Elgant student in the sense that he started in Padova long ago in 2016. And Starting in Padova, he went to Leiden, actually he was my student, and uh, like many Elgin students, continued with a PhD. He did it in Denmark, in Copenhagen, uh, with Fabian Pazuki, and he started his postdoc career. That's something, if you continue in math after your PhD, it is still far ahead of you. Uh, then there is this un uncertain time where you have to spend more time abroad in these scary countries with different habits and awful food, which is non-Italian, but Francesco successfully managed to survive all of this, and he just got a position at uh, the Metro Conference in Clermont-Ferrand, so he's now academic faculty, senior person, and we felt it was a good idea to invite him to deliver a presentation on the Elgant Alumni Network. And Elgant alumni, that's a different uh, keynote file. So now we have the local expert to actually change between the files. And ideally, that only takes 10 seconds, but it may also take a little bit longer. No pressure, Nicola. Um, and during this time, I'd like to invite Francesco to slowly come over, prepare what you want to say to this distinguished audience, and behave like an alumnus. Francesco. Okay, thank you very much. Um, today I am here as a representative essentially of this association called Algant Alumni Network, which is uh, in two words, uh, a community, an association of which every Algant student that graduates automatically become part of. No? So I will explain soon what it means. But first, let me renovate the congratulations to you in names of the association. And I want to prompt another round of applauses for you. <laughs> Bravi. OK. Uh, so. I want somehow to give, to give you an idea of which kind of community you that graduate today will enter, uh, will, will become part of. And let's see. Mm. Ah, here. OK, thanks. Uh, so you have seen in the previous slides that, uh, well, you, you come from a bit all over the world. We have seen Taiwan, Croatia. Italy, of course, and uh, along the years, uh, a lot of countries have been covered by this Algant program. And if we were now to color in red each country uh, in the world uh, where an Algant student graduated, where an Algant student came from, well, we will obtain this kind of map. And uh, well, the, the world is pretty colored, pretty much colored. New entries in the recent years are Egypt, Portugal, Switzerland, and in fact, well, it was very difficult to color this map. Uh, no, not every country, you, you cannot see every country because some of the countries are too small. For instance, someone came from Curaçao, which is a bit above Venezuela, and I tried to color, and it's very difficult. Uh, so, a lot, of, a lot of different countries, and a lot of students. So, let me show a bit of figures. We have uh, up to 2023, uh, around 400 graduates, including you. Uh, almost 50 countries of origin, if you count a bit the red countries and include the things that you don't see, we arrive more or less at 50. And 
Well, after this graduation, uh, each of you, each one of you, will uh, take its own path. Uh, experience says that usually most of the graduate students will continue with a PhD, but after the PhD, uh, you will take all different paths. This will be valid also for you today. Uh, so, so what happens then? Does it mean that Algant finishes today, we turn the page, and we forget about it? Well, the answer is no. And uh, the reason is this uh, uh, association that has been created by former Algan students that is called Algan Alumni Network, of which I am a representative today. Uh, and what is this association? Well, and first, of, first of all, this association is, uh, well, is, uh, is a true association, which means that this kind of logo has been completely registered. We have a bank account. We have, uh, I mean, we are completely official. And uh, law imposes us to have, uh, to have a board. And here is the board of this Algant alumni. Uh, so there are many things that you can think of when you see these pictures. Well, uh, uh, maybe one thing that you can think is uh, they are all Italians, o almost. Stevel is actually French. Uh, but yes, we are pretty much Italians, but uh, okay, this doesn't mean anything because this board is completely formal. These are just the coordinating group of this association. Um, and in, as you can see, we are kind of heterogeneous uh, in the year of graduation. So me, you can see me, I am graduated in 2018, but some people graduated in 2014, and there are some recent people, Stevel, 2021, no, only two years ago. And what do we do? So, essentially, uh, this Algant Alumni Network poses itself in the middle between the new, the future master students of Algant, the alumni, so the people who graduated, like you, and uh, the true Algant consortium is a kind of middle point. But rather than talking abstractly about this organization like this, uh, me, I like to make some examples of activities that uh, we try to organize to create this network of people coming from Algant in order to not forget a bit about each other. So the very first uh, activity that was uh, uh, promoted by the Algant Alumni Network was in 2016. It's called the first Algant Alumni Day. This was in occasion of the 10th graduation ceremony of Algant. This ceremony was in Bordeaux. Uh, and, uh, well, the Algant alumni invited uh, Jean Piesser, who, for whoever doesn't know, is a famous mathematician who shaped kind of the mathematics of the, of the modern mathematics. Uh, but uh, this 2016, uh, yeah, I was, a bit, I was a bit too young. Uh, I still, uh, I just started Algant probably at this time, so I, I can't really say much about uh, this event. Uh, but fortunately, the Algant alumni organized something else which is the, in 2019, the first AAN symposium. Uh, okay, so you can read uh, that this symposium took place in this uh, Centro de Ciencias de Benasque, Pedro Pascal, this is uh, a research center in the middle of the Pyrenees, and this event was really meant to call all the former Algan students and group them together and let them interact and talk about each other, share their experience. So you see, there was a quite, quite a group, a uh, big group here. And uh, well, what, what happened in this symposium? I want to talk a bit about this symposium because later you will see another one coming. Oh. Well, of course, uh, there have been talks, but the talks have been of completely different nature. So you see mathematical talks on the right. Uh, on the upper figure, we, you, see, you can see uh, Bas Edixome that unfortunately is not with us anymore. Who is giving a, was giving a beautiful talk about uh, a sculpture that you can find in the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao. It was a really beautiful talk, I remember. And, um, and a, a completely different talk here. You can see this guy holding a tree in front of the blackboard, probably <laughs> doing a speed talk. Uh, yeah, doing a speed talk that was meant to be funny somehow. Uh, and it was, actually. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, this is just to, this is just to I, 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 of course I just selected three pictures, I could have selected a lot of them. 
uh, there was really a wide variety of different talks because the, the goal is not to do mathematics, it's to create a community. And another way of creating community is, of course, uh, doing fun activities. So the, the Centro di Ciencias was chosen in the right way, in such a way that we have, you see, table soccer over there, people playing or people playing music. And of course, this place was also in the middle of the Pyrenees. So we went for an excursion. You can see, I'm, I'm very small, but I'm, I'm there. And, and it was pretty wet excursion. Uh, it rained a lot and uh, it was very difficult, but it was very fun somehow. Uh, yeah, I even bought a t-shirt uh, to, to replace my wet one. Uh, so, you see all these, all these things somehow is to, get, is to get together, nothing more. But of course, uh, this is possible only if, uh, only if something uh, terrible doesn't strike, which COVID was. And of course, this COVID somehow killed a bit uh, these, uh, these meetings. Uh, but we, as an Algant Association, uh, we try to put a remedy to this situation, and we try to organize some event that, of course, uh, would take place online. And this event was kind of different nature than the one that we saw before. Uh, we decided to organize these uh, AAN Masters Welcoming. And uh, these were events that were meant essentially as orienteering for, uh, for a new master students that, that have just to start their new experience in Algant, and maybe they don't know anything, maybe, I don't know, they come from, I don't know, China, and they have to go to Leiden, and uh, what do I do in Leiden? How do I survive? How do I eat Dutch food? Uh, so, uh, you see that uh, uh, we selected, well, you cannot see, but we selected several people, several alumni, that um, uh, decided uh, to share their experience and to answer all the questions of the master students that were there. Maybe some of you actually even, even went to one of these events. I hope it was useful, if so. Um, another online event that we, that we did was these uh, AAN seminars. And now here I, want, I really want to stress that this Algant Alumni Network is not just for people who continue in academia. These are really for everyone, even people that go outside academia. The connection network uh, is really transversal. It goes through everyone. And uh, as a proof of this, we organized these online seminars where two previous uh, Algant alumni uh, that uh, didn't decide to continue in academia decided to share their experience of how is life outside academia. For instance, Greta Narder uh, talked about her experience as a high school teacher. And Francesco Stocco, uh, he was in a, in a company. And uh, well, I think these are very useful activities because you see, people that continue academia do not have any idea, at least me, I don't have any idea on how the world outside academia works, what happens. And uh, yeah, so I think this was a very useful activity, another activity of orienteering. Of course, this took place online. Okay. Actually, we also do, uh, we also do other things. As I said, we, we help uh, the Algant uh, Consortium, and in this moment, uh, we are kind of coordinating the creation of a new website uh, that uh, will, will have more modern features than the website you see now. You can see that the website is kind of outdated a bit, 2018, this, this is because of various reasons, but we are working on it, and we hope that soon we will have a brand new website to show. So you can see that you are already there in the table, and soon, hopefully, you will be also public. Okay. So, so, okay, yeah, what do we gain? Why do we do this? Well, to be honest, me, I don't, have, uh, I don't have any particular reason to do this. I really think that networking is a nice thing to do. Uh, it's very useful to, yeah, sharing opinions, experiences, talk among each other, what happens here, what happens there, how do, how do I do, how do I survive in a certain place, how I don't. Uh, and, and also, you see, yeah, we create bridges among generations. We try to promote contacts, collaborations. And uh, yeah, I really do it not because uh, I want to gain anything from this uh, adventure, but just because I think it's a nice thing to do. And OK, so there is a website if you want to have more information from us. The website has the picture of Ser. And in this website, you can also see the new events that um, are gonna, 
that are going to uh, uh, happen soon. And among one of these events, there is this uh, Algant Alumni Symposium that this year has been uh, renamed SIMPAN 2023 that will take place in France. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope that many of you are coming and you will have fun. And uh, here we have an official uh, email of the Algant alumni. If you want to get in contact with us, uh, we really need fresh forces to organize new events. We, the board that you saw before is just formal. We really need new ideas, and we really uh, uh, hope that, uh, that you will help us in this path. So congratulations again. Enjoy this beautiful day, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Thanks. <laughs>
All the students, please come here for the formal picture. All the Algan students who got the graduation today. Cosa dici? Secondo te, se usiamo i gradini e noi ci mettiamo sopra, va bene? O meglio, davanti al tavolo? Ok.